Earlier in the year, I had the chance to go over to Williams F1 and get up and close with some F1 cars. The best thing about that is that I was allowed to take a heap of pictures of anything that wasn't the 2017 car, so we have a fair bit of material for this video. This video isn't so much for the super diehard fans who know everything about cars, it's mainly for regular fans or aerodynamics lovers that watch the cars but don't get to see every little detail up close, or perhaps people that are very interested in the aerodynamics and need a bit more of an explanation. I'm going to start off with a few mechanical fun facts and then I'll get into the aero details. This here is a Formula 1 clutch. They are obscenely small. Being a multi-plate design obviously helps, but still, like, that's crazy. F1 steering wheels are surprisingly heavy, courtesy of all those switches. I held both the full carbon one from the car and a 3D printed mock-up, and they were both easily heavier than my buggy steering wheel. The steering column itself has a titanium end section that mounts to the wheel, and then this is bonded to a carbon tube which is in turn bonded to the universal joint. This thing was crazy light and they proof test everything to make sure it works. The bearing near the steering wheel is a spherical type bearing, so they can sort of minimize any friction from any misalignment in the shaft. The wheel nuts on the car are aluminium, not titanium, and are crazy light. The thread has an angled profile at the start to help it get started so you can get the wheel on quickly. This is an F1 drive shaft. Not sure I have too much to say about it, except that it's comically lighter than the ones on my buggy. And now, time for the aero detailing. Some of this stuff will be specific to the Williams car, and some of it will go across the grid, so take a little bit of it with a grain of salt. To start at the front, this is the front wing which I'm pretty sure everyone has seen a heap of, although some casual viewers may not have noticed the little intake on the nose which has a Williams logo in the grille. What's really cool though is actually how little material holds the wing on. It's only the tiniest amount of the actual front wing supports that is attached. If you move back a little bit, you can see these veins, which change name completely depending on which team you talk to. Uh, names I've heard include undernose turning veins, chassis veins, mid barge boards, J wings, and more. Um, they both direct the Y250 outwards and they produce vortices of their own, uh, which are fed to the floor then by the Y250. If you look further towards the rear of the floor, you'll see these little bumps. Now you may ask me what aero benefit these have, none. They are simply housings for the rear tyre temperature sensors. Just behind here and in front of the rear wheel, we have a series of veins. These create vortices on the top surface of the floor, resulting from the high pressure region in front of the tyre. This pushes across to the relatively low pressure region on the inside of the vein. That makes pressure differential across the vein, which produces a vortex. This little channel here then ducks the vortex back to the rear of the diffuser, where this is located. Now, my understanding from discussions I've had is that this arrangement tries to jet that vortex you saw down to the ground, preventing the tire wake. From my PhD research, I'm still struggling to see how the vortex wouldn't be trying to break down at this point. Uh, the vortex will impinge on the underside of the brake duct veins, which should give a bit of vortex downforce, and together it will enhance the vortex that's produced by the first few elements of the brake duct. So perhaps this vortex here, the big vortex, is what this structure is actually trying to direct down. And this may be what Ferrari is trying to achieve more successfully this year with their rather complicated rear corner arrangement. Jetting this vortex to the ground will help control the rear tire squirt into the back part of the diffuser. In this photo, you can also see the multi-element gurney flap. Now, these are all over the F1 cars. Here's a shot of the rear control arm. You can see the drive shaft sticks out in the inside, but then shield in the outer section by the control arm itself. It's a pretty cool level of engineering that's going on here. Moving back to the rear wing, I get a lot of questions regarding how the rear wings deal with end plate induced separations. Uh, you can see my swan neck wings video for more info on what the end plate induced separation is. But the solution is far more interesting. Where the wing connects to the end plates, there aren't two elements, but instead a whole bunch of them. And this totally solves that issue as the two element wing will be getting close to free stream air now. You can also see the scalloping of the end plate just below that to keep everything in line. I'm not sure if that's a rules thing or if they're trying to support the rear wing in every way they can around that sector. The end plates themselves also have little strakes on the outside that may not be so obvious from the TV. This image just gives you a quick closer look at the slots on the end plate. Going further forward on the car, something that a lot of casual viewers may not have noticed is that the barge board is not in fact connected to the floor across its entire length, and the actual floor has more of a rounded opening perpendicular to the direction of car travel. 
Here's just a final little bit of info. I'm not sure if this is what they were running for the race or not, but these little bits on here are actual stickers, meaning they have a hard raised edge and trip the flow, which isn't great for aerodynamic performance. Um, like I say, it's an interesting fact if these were in fact run for the race, but if they weren't, they may have just been put on for display, which to me makes more sense. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video of these little F1 details. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment on what you'd like to see a video from me next, and subscribe for some more. Hopefully, I'll see you next time.